ladies and gentlemen we are back in kvk we're doing season of conquest heroic anthem and today i'm going to be going over all of the commanders equipment and talent builds that i'll be using during this kvk i realized that i haven't done a video like this since like june or july and a lot has changed with my account there's been a ton that's happened in the game since then and also this is usually the type of stuff that i would go over on live streams but i haven't live streamed in a couple of months so if you guys want me to live stream again drop a thumbs up on the video that's how i'm gonna know if that's something that you guys are interested in anyway what's going on guys cheers i'm drinking water for once unless of course i replaced this with vodka anyway without further ado let's jump into the first commander pair that i'm gonna be showing you guys and that is none other than guan with sargon now this is an interesting pair because i'm actually still working on sargon so i'm not going to be using him until he's probably until the next wheel of fortune so until then i'm going to be using alexander the great as the secondary right now my sargon is five five four one but i am definitely going to be expertising him he's absolutely a commander that i'm going to be using for pretty much every war moving forward as an infantry main now i know some initial testing with guan sargon revealed that it wasn't as good as cpo sargon or sargon cpo and honestly i think that's completely understandable i think cpo is just a better commander than guan yu in general but i still think that the guan sargon combo is ultimately a more well-rounded use of sargon in an actual five army build i think i actually talked about this in my sargon video but this is the pair that i'm going to be using and i think it's pretty self-explanatory obviously guan yu super powerful aoe with the silence infantry attack march speed a little bit of healing factor and an additional damage damage factor here depending on how many targets that he hits plus he also gains an extra skill damage whenever he gains a shield and some march speed when he leaves a structure all of that synergizes really well with Sargon now of course his active skill super high single target damage it ticks over time damage over time and don't love that about Sargon but the rest of his kit is great if you like Guan Alex Guan Sargon is basically just a better version of that Alex and Sargon aren't doing the exact same things in the open field but Sargon in general is going to be dealing more damage and his stat spread is just better for infantry in general he gives you a little bit of infantry attack some nice little health bonus here that we're going to be missing now that Guan is no longer paired with CPO we're going to be spreading that odd debuff across three different targets every single time that Guan Yu's active skill pops off and also whenever his fourth skill triggers it's also going to add another stack of odd which is essentially going to make the target take more skill damage which is really good because guan is dealing a ton of skill damage as it is so we love to see that on top of that once they get 10 stacks they're also going to take a thousand damage factor from the fourth skill here you also gain a shield and this shield is going to give you 15 percent increased skill damage from the expertise on guan yu which we absolutely love we have some march speed here we have infantry damage which i love as well and there's also even a chance of 30 percent da damage bonus and then eventually when i get his active skill you get a little tiny bit of tankiness here reducing the skill damage you take by 15 percent we love to see that that's going to be very important for guan and just a better way to inflict the odd stacks the odd debuff onto the target so i think that this pair again obviously i think zargon cpo is a better pair but we're gonna i'm gonna show you guys what i'm doing with my cpo as well and it's all gonna make sense okay the key here is that guan yu needs an exceptional secondary because guan yu at this point as good as guan is all he's really doing is a ton of aoe and a silence debuff and if you look at a lot of these new commanders their skills have so many different variables and they're all doing all sorts of like different things and debuffs and all these other triggers and all that stuff guan yu is definitely an older commander at this point and so if you don't pair him with sargon or cpo i feel like you don't really have that many good pairs for him these days other than those two whereas cpo has a ton of different options so we're gonna get into that in just a second but let me show you guys the equipment on my guan this is is probably what I'm going to leave on him when I pair him with Sargon you're gonna notice here your boy was a little bit crazy okay he went ahead and crafted the hammer of the Sun and moon now here's the thing this is a controversial piece okay of course if you're a rally lead or something like that then this is no it's a no-brainer okay but as someone like me who, who's more of an, an open field player a lot of the open field players go for the infantry shield the legendary shield right because eventually you can get a talent on there which is nice but the good thing about that is that you'll get the four piece set bonus 
bonus if you have the helmet the gloves the boots and the weapon you get a 10 percent march speed bonus for infantry i decided you know what screw that i'm not going to go for the four piece set bonus i'd rather take five percent more infantry attack than ten percent march speed maybe that makes me insane i have no idea but uh i went ahead and i did it i kind of just wanted to do it to do it i just wanted to say that i had a legendary uh weapon from the kvk shop and boom there it is your boy crafted the hammer of the sun and moon i put an iconic crystal into it uh not because i needed the extra help attack here i just wanted to do it because this is the most expensive piece that I own in the game right now. So there it is. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get the talent on here. If I had gotten a talent on it, I probably would have made its own video on this because that was actually insane. But I uh, I wanted to go ahead and craft this just for me, just for uh, just for fun. So there we go. We went ahead and gra crafted that. Uh, I also crafted the Van Braces of the Eternal Empire. Now I, I have three of these now. I had two before this. Um, I actually have the purple gloves on Guan with everything else here, but yeah, I went ahead and crafted a, a third pair of the gloves here. So there we go. We have a bunch of iconic crystals actually on Guan Yu as well. And, uh, we're still rocking Krox humility. I think, uh, this is probably the last piece you want to replace uh, for the infantry. Maybe you could make the argument that it's the weapon, but Hey, it is what it is. Now, let me show you guys my talent build for Guan here. You can see that I grabbed buckler shield and the conquering tree. We grabbed rejuvenate over here and we grabbed clarity. Now I love that this is for six seconds. That's just so long, especially because Sargon's going to tick his damage over time. And you're going to have that for all of those ticks, which is going to be really nice. Came up here, grabbed hold the line and strong of body. And I put the last point that we had over here in the 1% infantry health and grabbed the March speed along the way over here. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it for this talent build. I've used this talent build before, and I think that this is a, a really nice balance of everything. So I love it. Moving on to pair number two, we have none other than CPO with how rude of him to have his shield just blocking out, just blocking out all the haters. I was too busy blocking out the haters it's cpo primary with Tarek secondary now Tarek is interesting and today i actually went in and i was talking to some of the people over on the infantry fortress that's basically the infantry dedicated discord and i was kind of talking to them about a couple different builds that i was considering and eventually uh we landed on this cpo with Tarek. now right now my Tarek is five five one five um i used i think nine skill resets trying to get him here which was very painful to be completely honest with you guys when i got my five five one five nebu i only used like two skill resets so I got really unlucky getting this after nine, but I figured I don't really have much use for skill resets these days. Anyway, most commanders that I'm going for, I'm going all in on. And eventually I probably will expertise Tarek. I, I probably will, but hear me out. If I'm not a rally lead here in rise of kingdoms, what do I need this third skill for? You go, you go ahead and tell me. Cause I don't actually think I need it. So realistically the other 310 sculptures or whatever it costs to unlock the expertise, all that I'm getting for 310 sculptures is 300 damage factor unless i'm surrounded in which case it's 900 damage factor i don't know 310 sculptures seems really expensive for 300 damage factor and the chance for it to be 900 if it's 900 i think that's that's that's, that's, that's a pretty good investment but for most of the time it's probably going to be 300 i don't know i mean the thing is cpo does get swarmed a lot so i'm probably going to be getting this 900 often uh so i i, I probably will eventually expertise Tarek, but uh i want to at least run this combination for a little bit just to get just to see how it actually performs right because when you take them to five five one five i mean it's more than halfway of the investment but you get most of what you're looking for there and if it sucks at least i save 310 sculptures but realistically this combination is super good okay obviously everybody knows cpo has a super powerful three target aoe with a very powerful health debuff 30 percent reduction huge we have 40 percent infantry attack on cpo and we also have 40 percent infantry attack on Tarek. so we have a ton of infantry attack on this on this pairing here which is absolutely insane we have some march speed over here that is base and also triggered by being outside territory 20 percent infantry health which we desperately need for Tarek, and we also have the continuous damage over time from Scipio, skill damage taken reduction and a shield here which we love to see also 10 percent more skill damage and when the target is silence rage grows faster now of course there is no way to silence a target with Tarek or anything like that but 
uh the the beauty of this is that my guan and my cpr are going to be in two separate marches but they're probably going to be hitting the same target so i'm still going to be gaining the benefit of that target being silenced by my guan even though my cpo is separated from him now Tarek is doing an insane single target damage factor which we love to see that you're going to be just melting down that target even faster if people try to swarm down the cpo you're also going to be dealing 10 percent more damage to cavalry and that's going to apply to the cpo aoe as well so that aoe hit if it hits a, if it hits a cav it's dealing more damage we also gain a little bit more march speed here as well the third skill does nothing Thing, we get 15 percent increased damage for cpo that's i mean hello that's exactly what you want and we have a really nice debuff here so not only are we going to debuff their health but we're also going to be debuffing their rage regeneration so this is going to be a really high priority target for the enemy to hit and if they're hitting my cpo with Tark, well then great news they're probably not hitting my guan with my sargon and so this is kind of the conclusion that you know i sort of arrived at when i was throwing out different ideas in the infantry discord and i think that it makes a lot of sense i think now with these two new infantry commanders with sargon and with Tark, we finally have a really compelling reason to split apart guan and cpo and because of doing that you're spreading out the aggro between two marches and both marches are exceptionally strong previously to this if you separated Scipio and Guan you typically had Guan with Leo or Guan with Alex or something along those lines and really that's like those weren't great marches in my opinion Guan Leo is outdated Leo is very slow it's a very slow March it's just it is it's not great okay and then you would do like Scipio with Honda or Scipio with uh, Chuck or Harold or even Mehmed right and those are all fine they're all great but i think we finally now have a two infantry march set that is uh very compelling and very good so i'm happy that this this pair seems to be very good also one thing worth noting is that this massive single target nuke is going to hit during their health reduction from cpo because cpo is going to be primary and i'm going to show you the talents for and the reason for that in just a moment but first let's go over the equipment here here we have obviously three legendary pieces here obviously you always want to replace that purple chest piece but we do have the talent and the iconic crystal in the hope cloak and we have the two-piece set bonus here so that way we gain a little bit of extra troop defense as well we have the blue shields here uh, obviously we could do the sakura things like that but realistically we have so much attack on these two we have 80 percent infantry attack already and uh you know the extra health here from the gatekeeper shield is always beautiful we love to see it same thing with the karox humility as well we have the ring of doom i think we're going to be dealing a ton of damage with this so we want to put the ring on here just in case and we have the silent trial over here and of course frost treads i'd like to replace those eventually but it's really not a super priority also i'm poor so hey what are you gonna do but this is the talent build uh, as much as i would love to prefer having Tark primary because cpo is such a big target and hiding him is always good Tark has the defense tree and when you're looking at dealing damage or having some sort of rage engine you just don't really have that in the defense tree unfortunately so while it may make sense in a rally or something like that uh it doesn't really make sense for open field fighting so cpo primary 150 rage whenever you use a skill is going to be huge for a rage engine for these guys we also grabbed loose formation to just further reduce the skill damage that you take not only from cpo skills but also from the talents here now as well and then we just maxed out the uh the infantry tree right because versatility is pointless there's really nothing else that we could do and if you try to go up the other side of the the bottom part of the support tree you basically waste a lot of points grabbing like Alexa and stuff like that just to grab emergency protection and cage of thorns isn't great I actually I mean it's fine but I'd rather just grab all the stats up here and it, it's pretty simple next let's talk about my third army and that is Harold primary with Alex secondary now this is a tried and true army this is sort of a no-brainer a lot of infantry players are familiar with this army it's a great way to continue to use Alexander the Great and originally I was planning on going for Pakal instead and I still might actually do that but let me tell you guys a little bit why I'm considering skipping Pakal right now and I know a lot of you guys probably are on this on the fence about that right like half of you are like of course skip Pakal he's garbage and the other half of you are just like bro you're an infantry main Pakal Herald is like the easiest no-brainer March like you can't swarm it down it's incredible and and I get that right and I still might go and just do Pakal just so I can finish it off and be done with it 
But first, let's talk about the Harold Alex pairing and why I think that it actually might be even better in the future. Okay. So obviously with Harold, you have a very sort of a weak single target damage factor, but once you get swarmed, it actually turns into a more powerful circular AOE, which is nice. And you gain 20% increased damage for two seconds, which, Hey, that is pretty good. You also gain a ton of attack with Harold. Not only is it 30% with the March speed, but you're also going to stack attack over time as you're, as you're fighting. So really high attack on this march it's actually absurd and also you have a 20 percent chance of just casting stamford bridge or sorry berserker i always forget that it's called berserker but stamford bridge can cast berserker 20 percent chance it's free it's a five second cooldown but you're gonna see those axes flying boys they are flying all the time all over the place and you also get a really nice counterattack damage buff here uh if you do get swarmed which is nice because you probably are going to get swarmed unfortunately now what we do here with herald is we maximize the skills okay we maximize the rage engine we just pop off the rage okay every time stanford Brig bridge triggers berserker you're going to gain another 60 rage and so the, the rage engine on here is just ridiculous so we go all the way up to feral nature maybe that's a waste maybe we don't need it uh, but hey it is what it is okay and then we come up here we grab hold the line we grab strong of body we get the extra damage to uh calves the rage engine here and we just put one point in march speed because why not pretty self-explanatory talents uh the the synergy here with alex and the reason that i'm using alex is that the shield is nice you do need the shield for herald truthfully it doesn't help as much as you would think it's still this is a very glass cannon march unfortunately because you're reducing your own defense and the only time that you gain defense from alexander the great is when your shield is up and it's only up for a few seconds other than that you're going to be gaining 70 percent infantry attack which is a ton of attack but you're already going to be getting a ton of attack from herald so I don't know it's just a ridiculous amount of attack on this plus you have the direct damage factor on uh on alexander the great and you're going to be passing shields around to your nearby armies and ideally if you're one of your armies like let's say your guan yu gains a shield from alexander well now you gain 15 percent more skill damage on the guan yu so having the uh the alexander in your sort of five army configuration does have nice synergy there but also the big thing here is the debuff right three enemy troops in the circular area take 30 percent increased damage for four seconds that is absolutely insane and this is one of the reasons why i've kind of come back to alexander the great and just given in i've been trying to break up with alexander the great for a while now okay i've been using martel because he's more tanky i've been looking at pakal because he's more tanky but i think with this five armies that i'm using right now this is just such a powerful debuff the synergy with the shield and it's just there's just a lot to love about alexander the great but on top of that we're going to be getting a relic for alexander the great in the near future over the next couple of months we should be getting it we have no idea when it's going to be coming but we do know that it is coming and if it's a good relic then that could really revive this march as you know a herald primary with alexander secondary it's already a popular march but it could be even more powerful in the future if we do get a nice buff to alexander if i were a betting man i would say that the buff to alexander probably isn't going to be that huge honestly he's already a good commander i can't imagine that they're going to buff him too much because if they did then there wouldn't be really an incentive for people to spend money on the new commanders and this is a business after all so hey it is what it is anyway this is the this is the build that I'm using for my herald okay yes I am using the soccer of Fubuki uh, I know we already have a ton of attack on here but I just have this soccer of Fubuki and I don't really know what to do with it also the soccer of Fubuki is actually good if you do a herald with Martel and I might actually be doing that depending on where we're at in the uh in the kvk right if I'm going to be getting swarmed and I know I'm going to be playing more defensively then Harold Martel is better than Harold Alex and we're going to be doing that and having the extra attack here because Martel is has a lot of defensive capabilities that's going to be that realistically I should be using the blue shield here instead and maybe I'll do that if I'm using Alex but I only have to worry about that when my Sargon's expertise so anyway don't don't be hating in the comment section below I know that I don't I shouldn't be using this with Alex regardless you see there's uh no talents here on this on the legendaries here which is unfortunate but we did put the iconic crystal into the eternal light I think the extra health here is nice and I just had an extra iconic crystal that I didn't really know what to do with so I threw it in there I feel like it's important obviously the eternal light here instead of the Crocs humility is to make up for the fact that you're going to be reducing your own defense with Harold he's literally reducing his own defense so that's kind of the reason that we have the Shio's return here uh it's half a point more infantry uh, infantry defense so boom there it is uh that's kind of that's kind of my justification here um the uh, accessories here are embarrassing i will admit that i'm probably just gonna like break this wind scars down and just use the materials for something else eventually 
I don't really know what I'm what I was thinking when I crafted this it like March speed is good but the accessory slots are just so premium that I I don't know if it's that good you know moving on to my fourth army he's actually already out in the open field and that is none other than my Alexander with William both of these commanders are actually expertise and I did actually go and expertise my William uh, last kvk a few months ago because the extra defense here was just nice and the fact that I get the uh the the extra damage factor and the bonus from the expertise William is just a really powerful commander he, he really is and as somebody who is an infantry main who's not focused so much on cavalry I have an expertise Joan of our crime I, I just I haven't done it obviously she I think is probably if you're going to build one cavalry march you probably want Joan of Arc prime as a secondary instead of William these days but realistically they're they're close okay they're close yes Joan is definitely better but I already had William and as an infantry player do I want to drop another 700 sculptures into a non-infantry commander? I mean, maybe it depends on what the future holds, but I have other things I have to focus on as an infantry player. So for me, it was a no brainer for the Nevsky with my William. Now, I don't think this really needs explaining the single target damage on ne uh, Nevsky is insane. Really powerful defense reduction. We have a ton of cavalry stats. He literally gave, gives you attack, health and defense, which is ridiculous. There's also health on the expertise as well increase normal attack damage increase in skill damage I mean he just he's doing everything okay more bonus damage to surrounded targets like it, it, Nevsky is a no-brainer he is the cream of the crop he's like the best cavalry commander in the game so it's no wonder that I'd be using him William compliments him really nicely because he does have a three target AoE that's pretty powerful and it slows down the, the targets that it's hitting it also prevents the extra skill damage buffs from taking effect William is also really nice to have in your five army lineup because he increases the defense and rage of nearby allied troops which is nice if you hit multiple targets so it is conditional but you're also gaining more cavalry attack and damage here on the second skill and on the third skill as well which is really nice tons of cavalry attack here on William William, and he really just helps you swarm down a single target now if we take a look at the equipment here I don't know if I've changed the equipment since since last time I showed you guys this this is kind of just my default cavalry cavalry build um obviously I'd like to improve the purple pieces here but realistically going Ash of the Dawn is like really a very small improvement in cavalry health and if I go for the rifle of the hellish wasteland that's a really expensive piece and we're converting we're going from what 17 percent defense to 20 percent attack it's like eventually I'm gonna want to do it because of the iconic crystals but at this point I'm kind of chilling I feel like this is this is solid now I did move my Moore's web here my Moore's web was elsewhere before but I put it on my Nevsky because I realized that yes it's nice to reduce their defense but realistically you're gonna want to reduce the March speed of Cavalry and Nevsky has the highest probability of hitting the Cavalry so that's kind of what I did there we also have a talented silent trial silent silent trial is very good I like silent trial a lot ladies and gentlemen the talent build here I think is pretty self-explanatory um now this you know what actually maybe it's not this is this might be a little bit controversial okay uh, a lot of people like feral nature okay a lot of people like feral nature they want to pop off the skills as fast as possible with Nevsky and I totally get that okay I I really do but the thing is like with rallying cry 15 percent all damage is huge now it's only for 10 seconds after entering battle but consider this pay attention next time that you're fighting in the open field consider how long you're in a battle before you leave and you engage another target you you disengage and re-engage quite frequently in the open field and you, you can kind of abuse the bonus damage from rallying cry which is really nice I also grabbed on dying fury obviously a rage engine over there I threw one point into equestrian excellence because I had one point left over and it was either that or like half a percent of attack or something like that so I figured hey why not I also grabbed the one percent of health here as well tactical mastery makes sense for skill damage and reducing the skill damage you take I think the skill tree is pretty self-explanatory and uh, skipping versatility makes sense as well and last but certainly not least is my Boudica with my YSG now here's the thing I've been going back and forth between YSG and Nebu okay I think I might continue using Nebu I, I don't know last KVK I did Boudica with Nebu and it was it was good right it was good but here's the thing Boudica is like the number one targeted thing right now I feel like because her active skill is so powerful it immediately makes the target take 35 percent increased skill damage for three seconds and it reduces their March speed it's a very powerful debuff and it deals a ton of freaking damage okay she's got really great stats we we all know this about her okay but because of this active skill she's a big target people swarm her down and she's really not that uh she's not that tanky okay and most people see Boudica and assume 
that there's a YSG behind her. Okay. And so that's another reason to swarm her because you don't want YSG in the open field. He gains so much value out of this massive AOE that you want to get rid of him as soon as possible. Okay. And so my theory was that I would use Boudica and I would pair her with Nebu. And the thing about Nebu is like, yes, his AOE, it's not as powerful. It's not a circle. He doesn't have the 50% bonus in skill damage, but he does have a 15% all damage bonus, which is nice. He does have a rage reduction debuff, which is very good as well. But my thought was that, okay, he's got 30% defense, right? And he's got some extra March speed and that combined with the debuff and the damage bonus, I figured would make him a little bit better and withstand, uh, getting targeted a little bit better in the open fields behind Boudicca, right? And I don't really think that that's the case. I don't think, I mean, it's, it's quite a trade-off, right? He's a little bit more tanky than, than YSG. Okay. But at what cost, right? It's still going to be targeted fast and it's still going to be swarmed down fast. So for me, I'm, I'm, I'm going back and forth between Nebu and YSG and I'm leaning more towards YSG at this point. Okay. Because again, no matter who you pick, it's going to get swarmed down really fast. So you might as well have YSG out there and just get the maximum amount of value that you can and just spam the 50% AOE, just ridiculousness that YSG is known for. And I feel like I don't really have to go through the rest of her kit, right? She gains 30% attack and defense and March speed, 25% reduction in skill damage taken. It, I mean, she just, she wipes away her own control effects. Like, hello, th there's just so much to love about Boudica and paired with YSG. It's incredible. Now here is the equipment that we're rocking with the Boudica okay this has probably the fewest number of legendaries that we we see in the entire video okay but we got super lucky with the talent on the chest and on the gloves it was ridiculous if you guys were in that live stream I put uh the the obviously iconic crystals into both of these even though you're getting a little bit of base attack at least I'm getting four stats instead of the regular three but having both of these gives me the three percent troop attack set bonus which is really nice I also keep the two set bonus troop attack from the chest or sorry the legs and the helmet from the revival set the the boots are probably next to go but realistically you know th there's a couple pieces here that i would like to upgrade but as an infantry player this is sort of on the back burner right now again Boudica is incredible but she is swarmed down pretty much right away i threw on delane's amulet to kind of help with that and you know threw nebu behind her but even still like it's it's kind of rough boys it's kind of rough i also threw the dagger on here just because i don't really know where to put my dagger to be honest with you guys this was a free slot that's really what it was it was a free slot i threw the dagger on there bada bing bada boom it's not too deep and as far as talent builds go we go all the way to the top and put three points into whistling arrows we go all the way over here to rejuvenate we go all the way over here to clarity uh and again we, you know with with using YSG, it might be worth going and just grabbing Feral Nature and just maximizing skill damage output. That could be the way to go. But the thing is, like, you grab Venomous Sting. This is pretty good, okay? And the damage over time here is it's not nothing you want razor sharp obviously you get the additional rage here i might change this okay i might change this 15 percent all damage for two seconds there's no cooldown on these by the way in case you guys didn't know uh the talents that have a 10 percent chance to trigger uh as far as i know don't have any cooldown so i mean whistling arrows it's it's pretty good even with only three points in it this is the other talent build that i have set up and so i'll probably play with this if i do switch over to using ysg maybe i will play around more with this and just try to maximize those skill shots because that's really what Boudicca is there for okay she's just maximizing the amount of damage output and you could say that like yeah i should have a horn on her which is definitely true and i think i did for last kvk but also like that's basically just like sacrificing my horn right because like she she's going to be first to die we know it i know it you know it Everyone knows it so then my horns running back to my city right and i only have one horn so i figured might as well put it on guan i don't know at this point i'm just rambling but that's pretty much it guys i've shared my five armies with you guys for this uh for this upcoming kvk i don't honestly know how much fighting i'm gonna get to do during this kvk because i literally have no resources and we were just in kvk it feels like a month or two ago and i just have not i have not recovered i haven't we're already like fighting is already about to begin so i don't really know this was supposed to be a recovery kvk but apparently we're fighting now i'm not really sure i don't know how that happened i think we just like were unable to register for the kvk we wanted but hey here we are we're back in kvk and i'm sure there'll be some fighting going on at some point with that being said if you guys found this video informative or entertaining or whatever drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so the rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below your thoughts on the five armies and equipment and talent builds that i'm using in this video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace